Today on the show, we're going to be talking about my favourite anime of all time, Madoka Magica, and what some of the characters represent. Madoka Magica, an anime released in 2011. And at first glance, you might think it's your average magical girl anime. But then if you watch it, you realize the series takes a very dramatic turn and goes in a totally different direction. Some people might put the change in tone in the anime down to entertainment value, but that's not what we do here on this channel. I believe there's a lot to be learned from this change in tone. This is going to be part one in a three-part series covering some of the characters in Madoka Magica and what they represent and what we can learn from them. But before we get into that, we need to talk about Madoka's marketing. You see, when the anime was originally conceived, it was planned to be very unusual for the magical girl genre. However, the dark tones in the series were kept totally secret. No one was to know about them until the anime was released. But why would they do this? Why would they cover up the fact that this was a dark anime? Surely they could gather in a more mature audience with a very dark magical girl anime. Was it just for the shock value? There has to be something more going on here. And you're right, there is a lot going on here. The reason they did this wasn't for shock value at all. It's because there is so much to be learned from this anime that you wouldn't pick up on everything if you weren't shocked when you went in. And also the story of this anime is so heavy and if people already knew that this story was going to be so heavy, there was the risk that it would have been a failure. No one says, I'm going to watch a magical girl anime for the heavy, heavy story. Nobody thinks like that. I think everything to do with art for a very large part is done for a reason, whether it's a conscious reason or a subconscious reason. And in this situation, the reason the dark tones were kept secret was to make sure people could learn as much as possible from this anime. Now, before we go any further on this video, I just want to say that you might not have the same opinion on these characters. You might have picked up on totally different life lessons from all of these characters, and that's fine. This doesn't mean that you can't take what I learn into account, much like I can take what you learn into account. It's perfectly fine. We can learn from each other. So in the first part of this series, we're going to be talking about our magical girls, excluding Madoka. We're going to be talking about her later on because she plays the largest part and there is the most to be learned from her. To begin with, let's talk about Mammy, the girl with the ability to create muskets and ribbons, faster than you could say musket and ribbons. She was the first magical girl to be formally introduced in the series and she was the character to tell Sayaka and Madoka about the world of magical girls. Then in episode three, Mammy was killed quite horrifically. So let's talk about who Mami is as a character. So by the time the series starts, Mami has been alone for quite some time and a magical girl for quite some time. And we don't really know much about her early life because she was a magical girl for a really long time. However, according to the drama CDs and Madoka Magica A Different Story, she used to be very close with Kyoko. Mami's whole thing was she didn't want to be alone. She was terrified of being alone. The idea of being alone for the rest of her life scared her, and if she didn't die when she did, it would have made her fall into despair. The interesting thing about Mammy dying when she did is, we don't know how she worded her wish. So if she worded her wish, I don't want to die alone, that could mean that she died when she did because she had a friend by that point. Her magic appeared to be very, very powerful, but because we never got to compare her to another magical girl, we have no idea how strong she really was. I believe at one point she was possibly very strong, incredibly powerful, but the idea of being lonely just kept chipping away at her till she was weak and emotionally unstable, and that's why she died when she did, because she used to be strong, but she lost it. So what does Mammy represent? Keeping in mind that this isn't necessarily anything to do with Mammy as a character, just what she represents in accordance with our lives. Mammy represents loss. Now you might be surprised that I believe Mammy to represent loss as opposed to Kyoko, because Kyoko obviously experienced quite a good bit of loss, but hear me out. 
I do believe that Kyoko to a certain degree does represent loss, but only to a certain degree. I think she represents loss as an inevitability, but not loss as a whole. The type of loss that I believe Mami to represent is loss of a person or loss of a loved one. Mami was there from the beginning, almost like a family member or a childhood friend. She helped Madoka and Sayaka take their first steps into the world of magical girls and witches. She was so excited to finally have friends, to finally have people involved in her life. And then suddenly that was taken away from her. Now I say all of this was taken away from Mami as opposed to Mami was taken away from Madoka and Sayaka because Mami lost so much more with her death than Madoka or Sayaka ever could have lost. Madoka and Sayaka lost a friend. They definitely experienced loss there. But Mami lost the potential for a really, really bright future, excluding the whole becoming a witch thing. And the thing for me that confirms Mami representing loss is that after she was gone, everything felt so different. Everything looked the same, everything worked the same, everything was technically the same, but everything was so different. Anyone who has experienced loss will tell you after you experience a great level of loss, for some reason, everything just feels totally different and you cannot put your finger on it no matter what. Moving swiftly on, we have Kyoko and Sayaka. Before we get into these two characters, you have to understand that these two contrast each other to the 10th degree. They couldn't contrast each other more if they tried. Kyoko used her magic for herself to make her life easier. And Sayaka, when she got her magic, used her magic exclusively for others. She never used it for herself. However, both of these styles of magic did come with huge drawbacks, one more than the other. You see, Kyoko had to emotionally detach herself from her magic to be able to justify using it in the way that she did. However, it did mean that she had to lose her full range of abilities. Sayaka, on the other hand, only used her magic for other people, which meant she was very emotionally involved with her magic, as well as her personal life, which meant it didn't take long for her to fall to despair and become a witch, thus ending her life. I feel like these two characters have a very simple yet distinct meaning. Sayaka wasn't going to live for herself. Her whole life was about making so-and-so happy or so-and-so wants to be with this person, so I'm not good enough to make them happy. And this is what caused her to fall to despair. She never lived for herself. In life, you can't go around worrying about other people all the time. It's exhausting. You need to take time for yourself. Kyoko, on the other end of the spectrum, only did things for herself. She only lived for herself. And by the time she wanted to do something for someone else, it was too late. The message that these two really do convey for me is that as much as it's not bad to look out for yourself, you should definitely look after yourself. It's also good to look after other people and you need to get the right balance. Now Homura, the girl with the ability to travel through time that we have to thank for the entire story. What can she represent? She traveled through time hundreds thousands, millions of times just to find the right combination of events that would save Madoka. If you're watching this far into the video, I'm assuming you don't really care about spoilers. So you know about the drastic change in appearance and personality that Homura goes through as she tries to save Madoka. But outside of a fantastic story that nobody saw coming, what does Homura represent? Homura is hope. She's hope Homura. When Homura first set out as a magical girl, she was armed with hope and not much else. And as we all saw, she was very, very weak. And that's true of hope in its purest form. Hope can spark the beginnings of change, but on its own, it's very, very weak. It needs something else to add to it. But then as Homura travels through the timeline over and over and over and continues to fail, determination gets added to the mix and Homura continues not to give up. But then the hope begins to get corrupted. That hope ended up becoming an obsession and that obsession was all consuming and all corrupting. 
and Homura had no way of stopping herself. So Homura represents something that I have never seen represented anywhere else. How hope is so, so important, but you can't let it consume you because it's very, very dangerous as well. And Homura's hope was so consuming, it ended up holding Madoka back from doing what Madoka had to do. However, that's going to be saved to a part two of this series, which is going to be all about Madoka and Kyubei. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. What is your opinion on Madoka Magica? Please let me know in the comments down below. And also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And also don't forget to support the show by checking out my Patreon, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to my gaming channel. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Anime, and it is super effective. Thank <music> you.